Halloween costumes for the year. Are y'all celebrating Halloween this year? Are y'all doing anything? Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm thinking about getting my Dragonfly Jones on. I've been thinking about drag. I've been thinking about Dragonfly Jones. I already got the hair. I got the haircut. Just Mm -hmm. go ahead and get my little karate uniform, and I'm Dragonfly Jones. I was was thinking about Ghostbuster. Okay. Yeah, I I was thinking about work because I have to work. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna be for Halloween? Work, <laughs> man. That works. I'm gonna be a working man. Hey, what you talking about? <laughs> working man. Working man. <laughs> working man. <laughs> I'm gonna be a working man. I'm gonna be working man. Tell you about working. Halloween. Oh, it's scary. <laughs> Pass due on your rent. Woo! Woo! <laughs> what, was, what was that dude on, uh, on Martin? Aggravated man? Yeah. yeah aggravated exactly man. Exactly what I want to be. Aggravated man. <laughs>
right, I'm leaving. Yeah, yeah, leave it. No, we're done with that. Okay. okay, that was last week's show. All right. this, is, this is this week's show. Okay. Yeah, right. well, look, I had a good time on my break. It was much needed. Rested, relaxed. There you go. That's good. That's good. I'm glad. Chris, I'm glad. We held it down. Yes. Sir. Okay. <laughs> All right, then. Everybody, everybody is sober from their birthday trips. Everybody, we all good now? Okay. Oh, yeah. We all had to, you know, gather it, celebrate it. Now, we we, we all done did that. Now, what's, what's new? <laughs> I feel you. I, I feel you. I'll tell you, was, I'll tell you what's new. The president, by then, he uh, making some, some waves now, isn't he? Y'all heard yeah. about what I've been doing? He said he going to pardon all the weed smokers that's in prison, or everyone that's been handling marriage of Juana. Literally. Uh yeah, he came out uh, a couple of yeah, a couple of days ago, said, yeah, he's gonna go ahead and pardon these people. So I'm pretty sure they turned up in the, the prison cells or they turned up as they, you know, walk on out of the, of the prison cell right there. So well, I mean that's a good idea to pardon it because it's legal in so many states. Like it just does it make sense to still incarcerate people for it yeah. if it's legal in so many states? Where well, the issue is going to so. probably lie now is going to just be by each state. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if you were charged federally or if you were charged by your state, because like states like Texas, you know, if you were charged, you know, by Texas, then yeah, they don't apply to you. Yeah. Texas is petty. So they're going to be yeah. like, no, nah, no, nah. yeah. we're going to find something to keep you out you know, locked up right now. Yeah. yeah. You think Texas is going to be the only state like that? You think all the other states just going to be like... Yeah, Louisiana. Texas and Louisiana, boy, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I love Louisiana, but yes, they are hard on us. <laughs> yeah, they are. My goodness, man. That's they crazy. Hard on us. All these dogs it's on the still, Yep. You know, it's, it's still a couple cities um, in Louisiana that I don't feel too comfortable rolling through. <laughs> Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm so, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I agree. So we will keep. <laughs> shoo, shoo. Man, but we will keep an eye out. Oh, yeah, we'll keep an eye out on that as well for that. Uh, so that just that just shocked me when we everybody was blowing up online like, dang, okay, man. But yeah, but we'll keep an eye out on that. So, and another thing we keep an eye a cape. I feel like I'm still on vacation. Why am I talking like this? Another <laughs> thing we'll keep an eye out on. <laughs> Have y'all seen this? Uh, now, I'm going to excuse my French. Excuse my French. This is a basketball player out there with a certain name called Ho You Fat. <laughs> I hope I pronounced it right. I thought that Ho was a joke. Fat. Ho, Ho, Ho You Fat. fat. Ho Yo Fat. Ho You know what? At the end of the day... <laughs> At the end of the day, when I seen that, I was like, <laughs> that's one of those names. I was like, uh, look here, this is what we're going to do, okay? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, At 18, uh, we're we going to get this changed. We, oh, yeah, yeah, I, absolutely. I have control over what I can do or not. Like, that would be the first thing on the agenda. After the birthday party, I would be right at the courthouse uh, with signing documents. <laughs> Yeah, we got we got to change this. Straight, straight can, can you imagine? Can, uh, I'm sorry, Chris. Go ahead. I was gonna say uh, uh, he's uh, he plays for the French basketball team, so I guess right. he's part French. But his pops or his grandfather was from China, so I guess that's what a yo you the whole you. I get. I, get I guess. So. Oh, oh, I, I get. Oh, poor guy. Poor guy. Can, can you imagine roll call at school? <laughs> Seriously. Ho, you fat. <laughs> you know what? Ho, ho, you fat. You know what? Matter of fact, we shouldn't even get on him because you, you, you're right. Look, imagine the names at school. Mercedes yeah, Benz. Mercedes, <laughs> Mercedes Benz. Real people's name. Yeah. Oh, oh. Eric Deshaun. <laughs> Parsoner, ooh, Parsoner. It's a, it's a football player in Texas, a young player named The Realest to Ever Do It. A real somebody's real name. To real is ever do. There's a there's a football player in NFL. His first name, I have to look this up seriously. His first name is Savage. You That's know what? His first name. 
I, first name is Sanders. You, you know what? And these, these names, I'm telling you, and there's another celebrity. She named her kid Radio Science. That was, I know, I know um, that guy, he played the voiceovers of the first villain on uh, Incredibles. Yeah, yeah, Radio Silence. Dude. No, it wasn't Radio Silence. I think it was Radio Pilot. Something like that. Some, I think so. I think, something. Yeah. something like that. Yeah, man. So, yeah, your parents, y'all stop doing these kids like this. I understand with the Mr. Ho You Fat. I understand, you know, hey, it's your last name, whatever. His first name is Steve <laughs> with, two, with three E's. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, like the- I'm fed up with this name. Okay. Let <laughs> me when you get your children name like that, they just they have making it in the time. Yeah, with with three E's. It's spelled S T E E V E. Oh, you fat. I I mean, hey man, how many fights his brother got into? I don't know. He's six foot eight. I'm not messing with you. The brother, I mean, hey, man. Hope, hope, I mean, hey, man. We'll just have to go ahead and hit the initials real quick or something. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Mm. That's what, yeah, that's what we're doing. So, yeah, <laughs> but then I got to remember that he's French. So I'm pretty sure they had some kind of other accent added on to this. Yeah, that that don't make it any better. No, nope. it, it ain't it ain't gonna make it over the states when if he when he get drafted to the mm-hmm. NBA, it ain't gonna make it over the states. You know, hold you fat. Hold you fat for the three. The fat <laughs> committed a five. Hold you fat got ejected. <laughs> Can you imagine <laughs> Shannon Sharp and them saying, Skip, hold you fat just, just scored like 20 points? <laughs> he going to have to get that change. Oh, Expeditiously. Oh, yeah, man, doing that dude wrong. <laughs> Speaking of doing somebody wrong, to bring this segment to a close, did oh, y'all see this Superman punch? Draymond put yeah. that, that skippity pep, uh, I mean, hey, on Jordan Poole. I'm sorry, man. Look, That's I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Look, okay. I don't whoop this. I, hey, man, I'm just saying, man, we, we have to fight. I'm coming in the next day. When I wake up, I got to see you. I got to. wake up. <laughs> Yeah, when I wake up, because well, I saw that. It's funny you mention that, James, because I got some footage, actually. Uh, there's video of Jordan Poole when he came in the locker room the next day. Check it out. Okay. Wow. Oh, my God. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Someone call 911. Moly. You got knocked the f- out. Oh, good observation, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all gonna make that man really fight, fight him in the middle. It Hold ain't on, over. I'm sorry. This this that's just too much. You know, yeah. he laid the candy smack down on that ass. That's what he did. He came that was a straight, with it. That was a straight sucker he punch. He put his whole body into the punch. That's what mm-hmm. I said. But my yeah, my thing me. My my thing is it ain't over. He gonna get him. He gonna get him. No, got he, got, he got I, I he got he got to. I love that meme though they got with Draymond and, and the chart, and it said on this side of the chart it says mess around, the other side of the chart it says find out. And, <laughs> and that's what happened with Jordan Poole. <laughs> find out real quick. Oh, bro, yeah. I don't know what was said, who did oh. what. Yeah, I mean, in all but. seriousness, though, you can't, you can't, you put your hands on that man, you can't, you be upset on how he reacted, you know. Yeah, he started okay, it. So- is Draymond always like this? Like he's yes, he's very aggressive. He's, he he's called very K good. he called KD a B. He called uh LeBron James a B. But somehow, some way they ended up as friends. But I think this is like the line that he really crossed. I, I blame the Warriors because they never actually put like a hammer down on Jay Draymond. Draymond been doing some crazy things. That that little dude gonna get him. Oh, he gonna get him. I I, I strongly believe it. He gonna get him. Yeah, man, he. I just looked at it. Of course, you know, Draymond's six foot six, or whatever. Jordan Poole's six four, whatever. But Draymond, you know, got some weight on him, you know, and this, this is a different type of weight. <laughs> and like Sashay was saying, he put his full weight on this. Like, he, Did you see the follow through? I mean, the, yeah, the... like he was waiting. That's a, that punch right there. <laughs> like, I was waiting to do this for a long time. 
That was a build up. And, and then was... afterwards, you didn't even see Mr. Poole no more. I mean, everybody just collapsed around him. So we really don't know whether he was knocked out, whether they was trying to, whether he was trying to get back at him. Like we don't know what happened. He just disappeared <laughs> in the whole footage. All you see is him get pop, and then he's like, you know, that's it. I mean, where did he go? Where did he go? What happened? A great poet. A great poet once said, a great poet once said, get up, get up to get beat down. Oh, man. I'm on one coming in time. <laughs> somebody gonna, uh, somebody gonna handle up on Draymond. He gonna hit the wrong person. He gonna hit, it's not. Man, nasty. Draymond, we gonna have it's to fight nasty. every, every day we gonna have to fight every day. They gonna have to trade me. <laughs> release yeah. me. Pretty much, they, we fighting every yeah. day. If you be my every day, you gonna get tired. I'm gonna win one of them. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Who fight like this? You, you that's gonna all you gonna see. That's, that's me. That's all. You, that's what he, that's Draymond gonna see when I, when I come in the next day and get everybody just said ha 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 boom. I mean the, the, damn, right. the meme is made. Yeah, the meme, <laughs> meme is made. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's out there. Yeah. Yeah. It's already out there. It's already Next out there. But some day. somebody gonna get fired because whoever sold that footage mm -hmm. to TMZ, they're gonna find out. Yeah, that's that's. Mm -mm. Yeah, I mean, is that what everybody have to deal with on his team though? Like, I mean, I don't know. Draymond, th I, honestly, I think it's a color thing with Draymond. Draymond think he he tough, tough because he he he, you know, and they he around a bunch of light skin, and he's the only dog person in there. But them light skin dudes, they're gonna jump out on your ass one day. <laughs> we must come together and get the Draymond ass. Okay, <laughs> okay. We have to have a All meeting. Right. We have to have a light skin meeting in the locker room. Light skin meeting. Hey, look, we are gonna have to handle he's this man. This man think, he think we sweet. <laughs> on, behalf of, on behalf of the dark skin brothers, don't start none, won't be none. Anyway, <laughs> well, I'm saying, we, we, okay, we sorry we're making this about something it's not, but I mean, just jokes. It's just, just jokes. Just jokes. Just jokes. Just jokes. We think that everybody should just really help this man with his anger issues. Uh, can somebody give him some counseling or something? Give him some, man. You already got, got some pent up. Frustration that he yeah. obviously needs to deal with. Yeah, man, I mean, he won he's four championships. He's been in the league long enough to, to he should know how to handle his his himself yeah. in a professional manner. <laughs> and if yeah. he don't get any, you know, real consequences, then he gonna feel like, oh, okay. Don't just give him no slap on the wrist, like, oh, you gotta pay five thousand dollars or something. Like, that's not gonna do nothing. Like, nah. he really needs to understand that you cannot be putting your hands on your teammates. Like, they messes up the chemistry. Of everything that we're trying to build here, yep. at the yeah. organization. You need to come holler at Brandon Maxwell. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that woman who always doing therapy on TV all the time? Ayana. 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 She needs to handle up on Draymond. We need her. He might. He now. might try to mess around and hit her. <laughs> <laughs> Some she needs security. Need. She needs security. Who's middle world pieces of therapist? That's who you need to get with. Yes. He needs yeah. some help. That's who he needs. He needs some. Maybe he needs some of that good old. I don't know. He needs to calm down. Maybe he hey. Needs some <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Draymond, get you a pack and chill out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get into the Critics Corner. Y'all stay locked in. We're going to talk about some Halloween stuff. So y'all won't miss this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here at the Critics Corner where we talk about breaking news. And another channel that you can check out that talks about breaking news is Jarvis VIP Room. I got a couple of episodes that have been uploaded. I finally got off my, I finally got up and did something. I was finally, I, I'm proud of myself. Good job, Joffy. There you go. Great job. <laughs> I'm proud of myself, man. Good job, Joffy. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, yeah, y'all check out Jaws VIP Room as well. And something else you can check out because it is now Halloween. It is October. So, you want to get your Halloween on, check out the House of Spirits. 
Yes, the House of Spirits, where it's a cocktail party, scavenger hunt, all that little, little couple shows and everything. I won't give too much away, but if you can, check out the House of Spirits. It's great. going to be throughout all, every weekend in October. We've been hearing some great reviews already. Man. So, yeah, y'all check that out. So, and since Halloween is around the corner, like I said, well, not around the corner, but just around the corner, Halloween Spirit. Halloween Ends is coming out this week. Are y'all going to go watch and check it out? Y'all ready to see this thing in? Is it going in? Is it? I mean, uh, I mean, they, I mean, let's all hope so. Let's, <laughs> let's all hope so. Mike Myers is starting to develop a hip, a little, a little giddy up. Gonna be like, they're going to come out with another movie after Halloween. That's gonna yeah, be after. <laughs> uh -uh. I thought it ended. Well, it's after. Uh -uh. I'm not doing it. I'm, I'm due for just one scary movie a year. And I think that scary movie is going to be Smile. And then after mm -hmm. that, I've hit my quota. That and was I'm done. <laughs> okay. That smile looks scary. Yeah. Oh, that smile movie looks scary. Oh, looks scary. The yeah. trailer is scary. Um, mm -hmm. You Wait, know what? I yeah. might end up seeing Halloween just because it's like, I always did like that uh, Halloween series and other right. movies. So I might end up seeing that one just on the GP, like on just on a good note. But um, as far as like just my scary movie, uh, Smile, and then that's, that's yeah. No, <laughs> Can we just hope that? Hope that is. Mm. Can we <laughs> Michael Myers at this point should be a super villain? <laughs> yes. Yeah, man. They didn't, they didn't surpass the, the whole. You know, yeah. yeah, they just they just surpassed all of I, all I of agree. the human of of him because it's like, bro, they shot, stabbed him, and beat him at the same time, and he still <laughs> managed to Didn't get out. Up at one time too. Then they put him on fire, and huh? they put him on fire. Like, bro, uh, you awesome. I can't. I can't. <laughs> The Jason, the Michael Myers, the Freddy, and the Hellraisers, and all y'all. Stay dead. Stay dead, dead. Oh, my goodness. So do y'all have any ideas, speaking of, of Halloween costumes for the year? Are y'all celebrating Halloween this year? Are y'all doing anything? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking about getting my Dragonfly Jones on. I've been thinking about drag. I've been thinking about Dragonfly Jones. I already got the hair. I already got the haircut. Just mm -hmm. go ahead and get my little karate uniform, and I'm Dragonfly Jones. I was, I was thinking about Ghostbuster. I was okay. Yeah. I I was thinking about work because I have to work. <laughs> 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 what are you gonna be for Halloween? Work, <laughs> man. That <laughs> like works. It. Gonna be a working man. Yeah, what you talking about? <laughs> Working man, working man. Oh, scary! Pass dude on your rent. Woo! What's that dude on Martin? Aggravated man. Yeah. Exactly what I want to be, aggravated man. Oh my god! Yeah, man, straight up. Oh, Mike gonna be himself. He gonna be in costume as Mike at work. That's it. That is it. I have to work. <laughs> That's hey, you have to work in a the costume then. <laughs> yep. 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 Pretty much. That's Ooh, Mike. lay fees. Ooh, overdrafts. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's scary enough. That's scary enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Moving on, moving forward. Uh, I didn't know that this was actually going to be made into a movie. Um, from Tyler Perry Studios, he's working. He's the one, the name who's a part of this, Sister Act Three, kicking the kicking the habit is in production. Is it a rehab? You know, <laughs> I mean, it, hey, they, they they got started. I mean, <laughs> Sister Act, <laughs> Act Three. I was like, what? Whoopi, you gonna get back out there getting your nun outfit? I'm like, okay. So, Wait, is she even sister. gonna be in it? Yeah, they said oh, she. Is. Yeah. I think they were talking about it back in February. They, they, they announced they were going to do it and with Whoopi yeah. back in the it's, Yeah, it, it's one of those movies where we're like, why are y'all doing this? That's how they're like... Yeah, why? yeah. I, I mean, it's 
because I look at it as now that we are acting, acting, I will say there are times where I'm like, why are y'all doing this? But if I get cast in that role, like, yeah, go ahead and do it. <laughs> but Thank you. Still, yeah, at the same time, I'm like, okay, all right, let's, let's, let's see. Let's see how it goes. So, I mean, but at the end of the day, I mean, that was a really good, I mean, that were really good too. A collection of it would be a collection of good movies because yeah. the first sister act, I mean, it really kind of opened us up to, you know, some things that we never thought about, like how none, you know, like they're each of their story. Right. They may have their own story of why they like. That's kind of what it opened up me to, mm-hmm. and then also um, like how they give back to the community. So like, but the the second one. It was really the one that kind of caught the younger group attention right. because it had the kids in it and they were going to this. It you had know, Lauren uh, Hill in it. Yes. Uh, oh, young gosh. Lauren Hill in it. That's That was enough yes. said right there, bro. And also, mm-hmm. just look at the state of like current music, like how they blended like uh, spiritual music with like, you know, current with hip hop and, you know, it fused mm-hmm. a lot of music styles together, which a lot of artists mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, so if they're gonna do it, our standards gonna be high. You're gonna have to like outdo the it. second one. If yeah. y'all go, yeah, y'all gonna have to come. Yeah, y'all gonna have to it. come on with it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, please, because that like like Shay said it. That was it. That was it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so we'll see. We'll be waiting for that trailer. We'll talk about it when it come out. So uh, moving on to this. Uh, do 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 do. Boom, boom. Yeah, I saw what I did right there. Super Mario. Sorry. Do, 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 do. I'm, I couldn't help it. I'm sorry. I always whistle that tune, the little Super Mario thing. I dig the trailer, man. I loved it. I love what I saw from it. The Super Mario trailer. Did, did y'all get a chance to see it? I just seen it. Bits and pieces. Uh, it was, mm, yeah. As long as it's not a live action, that last live action they tried to do was terrible. Ooh, cool. Oh, <laughs> man. Ooh. Yeah, it was. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, it was. Lord but Jesus. you gotta think about it. It was in the nineties, okay? <laughs> it was in the nineties. <laughs> yeah. It was still terrible. <laughs> I mean, with the new was technology, they better come. They better bring it too. They better bring it. Yeah, I mean, from the trailer uh-huh. I saw, I'm like, okay, it looks good. I mean, hey man, not everybody. If you've seen the original Ninja Turtles that came out in the what late eighties, that surprisingly that still holds up. I still put that on there. I'm like, I'm not cringing watching this. It's still good. Yeah. And then they did Super Mario Brothers. We was like, <laughs> and then and then they did the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles again with Michael Bay. Look, yeah, it's so come on. Let let's just let's just come to reality that Hollywood is running out of ideas. Yeah, they are, and it's because you know they're not. They got to start taking account of some of the new things that's going on. Like we just found out about real aliens, like. <laughs> Yeah, they yeah. I don't they, know they, they gotta come out with some new stuff now. We just see all the stuff running out of ideas. I would say Hollywood is running out of ideas. They just need to expand their thinking because there's mm-hmm. other creators out there. They got some good stuff. That's true, but yeah. they you right. They have to get on. You know what I box You can't do things yeah. like you used to. Expand your horizon. Exactly. Yeah. Like no right. one was asking for Super Mario Mario's, but y'all brought it anyway. Yeah, yeah, you're right about that. And maybe they need to start working with some people, like changing up the people that they're working with and getting yeah. some new bright ideas for some from some of the starving artists that are trying to get out and do it. They need to start, you know, reaching to some of these people and grasping some of their ideas and putting them on instead of just dealing with the same people and coming up with the same stuff over and over again. I agree. There you go. I wholeheartedly agree. So yeah, man. So we'll keep we'll see how the Super Mario goes. Um, dig the trailer, love the trailer. We'll see how it goes. And like I agree with Chris. Glad that is not live action. Yeah. Ooh, Lord. Memories can be vile. Okay, let me stop. <laughs> you you um, keep busting these notes in each one of these segments. I'm just saying we hey. have to go ahead and get you go ahead and the whole Wait, phone. Jeffy album. At least a burst. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas time coming around. Everybody does a Christmas album. You right about that. Exactly. We know you welcome. We, we know Mariah Carey about the, oh, we, oh goodness gracious, it's coming. We know it's coming. I, I can hear you hitting one of those chestnuts roasting. It's not it. It's not. It's not time. Black uh-huh. people. It's not yeah. time. Black 
Yeah, it's not know. time. It's not time. Y'all worse than oh, New Yorkers. Right there, y'all worse. Y'all worse than New Yorkers busting with the Thames. It's not even cold outside. We ready. We ready. We ready. You know it's a little. Out here in my little, mind. Oh, this, it's not time. It is not time. No, it's, it's not time. Y'all worse than Magic One Hundred Two. I bet you Magic One Hundred Two right now. They playing it right now. Right, you you wait till after uh new uh, after things I uh, know after Halloween they start to play that. Mm-hmm. Not time. Not time. They getting ready. In my mind, I know I'm ready. Oh, yeah. Got my playlist ready. Time. And Have ladies, y'all heard about the shopping thing? Um, that people are already kind of like trying to get their shopping in. The, you know, they're already putting out the shopping deals because they yep. think nobody's gonna be able to shop come Christmas. What? <laughs> yes, really? they're already. Yeah, so y'all That's better start good. shopping. Don't wait too late. Don't be the last minute shopper. You might not have anything in there to get. I right. get everybody give cards. Give <laughs> cards for you. Give cards for you. My <laughs> wife, no, real talk. My wife spent almost 200 or 150 at Kroger's giving everybody give cards. Everybody get give cards. Simple. Thanks. At Simple. least you know what you're getting. Yeah, exactly. You get whatever you want. Everybody get give cards. Mike, Mike how, how do y'all hand out your gift cards? How, how, do, let me, what's the right motion you do? Do you go like this? There yep. you go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Oh, wait, do, do they be in like a card? In like a they, card? Be in, they be in a card. She'll write down, yeah. okay, this is for this. This is for this person. That's for this person. Yeah. This person. That's it. But we now we don't do that. Oh, we got to go to the store and go grab this. We got to go to, no, nah, my wife do gift cards and that that's it. Merry Christmas. So do it be like two specific stores or do it just be like a visa where they can just use it anywhere? Oh uh, no, they be at stores. Uh we, we got my brother in law some that South Grass little restaurant because him and his mm-hmm. wife they like to go out to eat. Uh we got our um my sister in law something. I think it was for the babies and babies are us if they have a babies are us. It was something that deal with the babies and we got that. You know, whatever's yeah. going on in your life, that's what we got you. See, yeah, I like y'all, man. That's a good idea, though. I like it's y'all. It's stressless, man. you know. Yeah. Damn, yeah. gift card. Yeah. You put a little yeah, bit we... of thought. Hmm, what's she going through? Oh, gift card. Bam, there you go. Yeah. I like that. Oh. Man, he likes to be a robot, too. You can buy robots for Christmas? Oh, okay. Didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Uh, that was kind of smooth, James, a little... It oh, was. Yeah. Oh man, I just, I just cut a little rug on the dance floor, man. I can get down, you know. I no, I'm a little. <laughs> Take that back on. Bring that back up. Get your mom on. We having a dance. Doom, 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 touch, doom, 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 touch, doom. <laughs> I, was always, I was always, I was always dancing to the music videos we would be playing. So everybody. <laughs> What was that? That 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 uh that that uh Usher slide. That's how I learned how to do the Usher. Slide. <laughs> I be killing it. Just, e, e, e. Oh, <laughs> oh, you get it over there. Like, oh, okay. Let me well, yeah, find right out. There. Chris can can do the um the, the Harlem Shake over. <laughs> Just start getting it, man. <laughs> if if the right music hits you, it's gonna <laughs> hit you. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> mm, Mike, mm, mm, mm. I, I was talking mm. about them gift cards, boy. I was laughing. I was like, I ain't gonna lie. I was like, hey man, it's, but it, it works because I, I need. I might do the same thing. Be honest with you, that's he smart. Your camera went out because the, you got mad about the gift card. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, I'm tired of this shit. <laughs> tired of goddamn. Okay, what you want? But no, nah. <laughs> yeah, man. But I was saying, man, y'all, y'all are. I like y'all because y'all are, are considerate gift card giver. You're like, what you got going yeah. on? Because you know, people give you a gift card for stuff you don't even need. Like, yeah. I want to need a gift card. It, it, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's some real thought that goes into it. Yeah. Well, shout out to my wife. She puts the real thought into it because yeah. me, I. You know. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, uh-uh, that's not the right gift card. No. Yeah, that's not the right. Yeah, you just, just grab it. <laughs> now you just grab it. Yeah, yeah, Starbucks, but I don't drink coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike, Starbucks. Yeah, take this. Yeah, yeah, take it. Oh my gosh, yeah, man. So, um, oh, also, a cartoon that's coming out soon. It's on HBO Max. 
So, and this is not the regular Scooby Doo type of mystery. It's called Velma. Um, so y'all parents, if y'all see this cartoon, y'all might want to look at the synopsis and everything else first before you tune in to this film. It's gonna be played by Minnie Kaling, you know, from The Office, uh, m multiple other series and movies. Very talented. I love Minnie Kaling. She's gonna be playing as Velma. She's doing the voiceover. So y'all just prepare others. I know y'all had the whole big old, that ain't the person that played us, that person ain't this color, that color. Just chill, enjoy it if you want to enjoy it. It is your choice to watch these shows. So, and it's also your choice as well as if you want to watch the Family Matters Christmas movie. Mm -hmm. I didn't know this was getting worked on. I think it's, but I think just from the, I got to look into the synopsis and see who all going to be a part of it. It looks like it's just going to be Harriet and the original Harriet and uh, the, <laughs> I always got to say her name like this. The lovely Laura Winslow, like the way how Steve Urkel would say it. <laughs> I think it's, it looks like it's going to be about her family. Laura Winslow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we've been talking about Family Matters need to come out uh, for some time. But uh, y'all thoughts on it? Yeah, and it's called Family Family Works? I think it's called Family Matters Christmas Movie. I, I'm not sure exactly what hey, it's I'm, called. But... I must have mispronounced it. Did, did I do that? Sorry. <laughs> well, I set myself up for that. <laughs> you set yourself up for that one. Oh my! Great job. God. You will do it, Chris. Good. Yeah, that, that, that was. That, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I didn't. I tell you. Yep. I tell you, Chris. <laughs> yeah, man. My goodness. But no, but um, about? I would, I would definitely watch it. I would definitely watch it because I like Family Matters. Growing up, I watched it all the time, so I would yeah. catch it. Yeah, man, I, I will check it out. I'll watch it because I, I want to see who's who or what gonna be in it. Um, what's gonna happen with it? We all been talking about we want a reunion. Mm -hmm. Hey, maybe this could be the thing that spark it and bring the original cast back. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. We most definitely will see. Cool. So, yeah, man. Rihanna's so, back. <laughs> hey. Rihanna's back. Hey. Okay. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited too. Yeah. I'm excited. Uh, re re, let's go, man. So, yeah, yeah. So just getting ready for Super Bowl appearance and everything. So um, everybody is hitting her up and saying, "Re re, what uh, what you gonna do?" And she like, "Just chill, just wait." So yeah, man. It's a lot of process to go into getting that together. Um, yeah, it was cool. Yeah, to, yeah it's, it's a lot. It's a lot that goes into it. So yeah. And I'm definitely watching it this year. I don't always catch it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I have to say, but I'm definitely watching it this year. Oh, everybody gonna be glued in to their TV. They gotta take it mm -hmm. up a step notch because who is Lord Jay Z is uh, is a, is in charge of that, right? Right. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. He's right. in charge. yeah. Maybe he's not like completely over. Like, I don't. know. I think he's he's at the table. Right. Yeah. yeah he, he's over. Uh, the decision uh, makers and everything. At least, like, I think he's at the, he. Well, he's part of the the group that's gonna be you know that picks the selections now this year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why we got, we got last year, you know. This yeah. year we got Rihanna, so I'm pretty sure we're gonna probably get a Rihanna album. People, oh waiting. yeah, oh, ooh. Uh, that's because that's what the Super Bowl is like—a big promotional. Mm -hmm. they, most artists do it for free because they get so much money from it, and that's why they go on tour right afterwards. So it's gonna be a, yeah, we probably get a Rihanna album. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. That's smart. I'm that, that right, She's that's that's it. smart. I'm re re. re. <laughs> Yeah, man. So, last thing. Um, this, uh, yeah, last thing. I, I, I'm like, man, what, what is going on? With, every now and then, this brother here, and we're going to finish it off with this, because I know this is going to take up some time. Uh-oh. Uh, I, I like, I, I'll be honest, I love Kanye West as an artist, because he's created creatively. The music and everything he comes up with, top notch. Sometimes there are some things I'm like, nah, Kanye, I think you should have touched that. But, yeah, creative genius, yes. But then there's the other side of Kanye, where I'm like, bro, come on now. So it's one of those moments with Kanye where you're like, hey, then you're like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so yeah, man. Uh, sometimes Kanye West just needs to have his moment where he just, you know, just to chill out, don't do nothing. Man. I think, I think, I think that everyone should don't give Kanye too much attention. 
But then I was listening to Sean King. Sean King was like, yeah, you got to give him some attention. It's something. something it's, it's like we just can't let a lot of stuff that just slide. It's like Kanye just do things. It's like, why would you say that? Why would you do that? Why would right. you say that? Why would you do that? But right. Charlemagne, he the best. He looks for validation on the other side for sure. Mm-hmm. He does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is it hard he to does. believe it's the same Kanye that said George Bush don't like black people? Remember that back in the day? Yeah. 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 And then he just like it's like everything he used to rap about being against, he became. Yeah. You know, like and at the end of the day, we might not always understand like him and the way he thinks and stuff like that, but um, I still feel like with your celebrity, you know, status that you have a big platform and you have to right. be very conscious about who you give power to or what you say or right. what you denounce. Yeah. Your words have power. Um, they do. They do. And like you have to think about the people that it may hurt. At the end yeah. of the day, I know we can't always be politically correct and sometimes with certain um, viewpoints trying to express them, somebody's toes may get a little stepped on, but when, when you figure out that you when you do something intentional like when it's intentional mm-hmm. like when you intentionally say I don't I don't care um, that's why I have a problem because yeah. intentionally, intentionally saying I don't care who this may hurt or who may not understand or whatever, mm-hmm. this is what I'm doing exactly. this, this is the thing about for me you know, it's disappointing because it's the conversation that we're having around white lives and black lives matter. And for the record, when we say black lives matter, like we're not saying that white lives don't matter, but it's just like the system is already, is not designed, you know, it's built against us. It's a lot of things that's built in place in this country against us, theoretically, not necessarily against y'all. You all have more advantages, uh, our less melanated brothers and sisters, but it's just like black lives have to matter because we have we are at a disadvantage. That's mm-hmm. all, you know what I'm saying? So it's like yeah. it's, it's starting so much. Okay, I can go deep into that, but I'm gonna pull back. I'm, I'm, you know, I mean, maybe if we put Black Lives Matter two on the shirt, like T O O, like as in also, maybe they'll understand what we're trying to say. We're not saying that all other lives don't matter. We're saying hello message yeah. these lives matter as I'm, well because people tend to forget that they do people don't I, understand I, that this is not a cut on all people no this is no uh, not an exclusion this is please it's include not. these people in your care and your concern it's it, it, it's like Kanye and Kyrie Irving are like those two guys in high school that just think they know everything so if you walk outside and you go, man, it's raining, they'll tell you, no, that's not rain. That's the manipulation of the tip, and then that, this is that, that, blah, 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 blah. It's like, bro, that's rain, bro. It's like you try to be the smartest person in the room, but then you end up becoming the dumbest person in the room. And, you know, <laughs> Kyrie Irving once said that uh, he agreed with this other guy named Jones, Alex Jones, that Sandy Hooks was a hoax. He retweeted that just recently. Sandy Hooks, the school shooting where a bunch of kids got killed, he retweeted that that was a hoax. So yeah. when you retweet something, you agree to it. And then in the next couple of days later, here come Kanye West with this t-shirt. It's like, bro, y'all, you, you, you try to be what, what they call like an apex thing, but you end up looking stupid. That's, that's, how, that's, how, that's how I take from it. And then it's like, like, come on, man. We we in this. All four of us, just like everybody else, we see this. You guys have the funds and the know and the means to go away from this. Mm-hmm. You know, you, um, you you're on the upper echelon. So we screaming out, "Hey, man! Black Lives Matter!" Like, yeah, everybody' house is important. Like, our house is important too. You want to cause a riot in this country? Just say Black Lives. Oh, Black Lives Matter. <laughs> Like they like you know for real, and it's like the frustration with it is like, yeah, Black Lives Matter. Why? Okay, so if you agree, then what you so frustrated for? If you mm-hmm. if you agree that that they that they matter, then why are you so frustrated? I'm about to just I'm gonna get a shirt made with that uh, get a clip of what y'all ever seen? All Pro, Will Ferrell. Yeah. yeah. Said, everybody love everybody. I'm gonna just have that shirt. 
and just <laughs> everybody love everybody. You shut up. <laughs> yeah. Speak, shut it I up. Mean, I mean, <laughs> yeah, like, like, like one comedian said, no, no disrespect to to nine eleven, but it's like, okay, when nine eleven come around, it's like all towers matter. What do you mean, nine eleven? All towers matter. All buildings matter. It's like Black Lives Matter. It's like, oh, that's a ride. But when 9-11 come around, what do you mean? The tw- what do you mean the Twin Towers? The Twin Towers, hmm. that's just one building. We saw a whole lot of other buildings out here. But, well, but we can degrade ourselves all day long. But when we say, hey, man, Black Lives Matter, it's a problem. It's a problem. So, mm-hmm. Then Kanye go grab Candace Owens. Of all people, he grabbed Kanye, Candace Owens. I swear that the, the, this man is smart, man. It's something yeah, he's smart and dumb at the same time. It's like you are good, hot garbage. Because, he know how to say it, really. Yeah. He yeah. know how to say it. Pretty much. Come on, come on, man. He you know how to say it. This is man. That's why I said people. Come on now. Yeah. Well, we can't get Think him about, the attention. What we need to do is just turn we our back can't. on him, like he's turning his back on us. I guess they just don't buy his music, don't buy his clothes, don't listen don't to buy his shoes, don't, don't support don't him. Don't listen to don't listen to I'll his stuff. Me don't support, support him. him. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Don't support him. Mm-hmm. Don't support him. Mm-hmm. If he gonna do stuff like that. Because I, I I tell you, let the Jewish community get it. Let him be a part of the Jewish community, and he put <laughs> Holocaust <laughs> or something don't matter. Boy, <laughs> you out of there. You done. Definitely. Go, you done. They're gonna shut you down quick in a minute. Quick. Things Black people, can... we just be mad for a couple of months and then we good. But now you gonna act right when that paycheck come up short. Yep. Yes, indeed. We need to get like other coaches and start saying, no moss. No moss. <laughs> for real. <laughs> no moss. And you know what? And it's like he's he's very rich right now. He's rich. And he's rich off the back of the people. That he just continued to hurt. Mm-hmm. Yep. It just, it don't make no yep. sense. Yep. And that slavery. Slavery, come up short. slavery was a choice. Slavery was a choice. This came out of this man's mouth. And I'm like, man, y'all ain't gonna do nothing. If y'all didn't do nothing about slavery was a choice, if he come, y'all ain't gonna do nothing. Let Kanye come out with a hot shoes in the next four months. Y'all gonna forget all about it. Mm. Or some hot music. <laughs> or some hot music. Let him do, let him drop an album. Y'all saying yeah. hot got me over here. I'm hungry. I'm thinking about hot wings. No. My bad. Don't mind me, y'all. Buffalo wings. He choose to be uh, be ignorant and and you know it's like a slap, but uh, it, it bothers me with him though because like he he used to always talk about in his raps. Like his grandfather used to do the sit ins, and mm-hmm. his mother would be right there, got a restaurant right side with him, and it's like a slap to me. It's like a slap in the face to them, to his answer. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. But okay. you know, he always feel like everything he do is, is some lot is some logic behind it. <laughs> what well, I said, him and Kyrie Irving, the uh, Kyrie Irving, the 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 Earth is flat. I was just about to say that. I'm not arguing with anybody who said that the Earth is flat. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. not I'm not arguing. I ain't finna. I ain't finna mess with you. Like, no. I ain't arguing. You know, it is like why? Just why? You you got it, dog. <laughs> I'm like okay. All right, like, like you, you gonna show up to practice? <laughs> I'm exactly you like this dude to be like, like well, let Joffrey be the coach. I want to. I'm Joffrey. I'll be the coach. coach. I'm, I'm, everybody getting benched. I'll find. <laughs> <laughs> get off the muffin. Get out of here. I'm tired of y'all. Kyrie Irving wants to say, we don't need no coach. We can coach ourselves. Hey, man, you can't make this up. Him and Kanye, boy, I swear, if they get into a debate, i like to pay to see that. <laughs> but they have to have a disagreement. <laughs> they can't be agreeing yeah. on something. They, they have, to be, they have to be too odd. It would. It would. <laughs> We're here some of the most stupid stuff in the whole wide world. You want to hear some stupidity? Let them two disagree about something. Let yeah, let them two go at it. Go at it. Mm-mm-mm. We'll be entertained. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all know we crazy, man. We going to, well, Tashay has to go take care of something real quick, but she'll join in with us a little bit later. We got a guest coming through by the name of Bradley Smith. Y'all want to miss this interview. Y'all stay locked in.
right, ladies and gentlemen, we got a special guest here in the Just Acting Up show from the Red Box. This, sir, I always love working with this gentleman. Bradley Smith, give him a hand. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me here. Appreciate oh. it. Oh, man. We appreciate you, man. Bradley, what is up, man? How you doing this morning? Doing, doing great. Great. Enjoying the weekend. Just diving in there. Uh, yeah, I've been doing a little a little uh, editing, a little um, working on some side stuff here, but uh, having a good time. Always doing that hustle, you know. Yes, sir. Well, I, hey, man, I know it, man. And I always appreciate you for everything, man. When you do send stuff to me or just ever, or just working with you, period, man. Yeah, always a pleasure. Oh, yeah. It's always <laughs> fun being on set, dude. You're, you are you're a light on set. You're, you're definitely a memorable presence, too. Oh, man. Like you're, a guy, you're a guy when you leave set, you're like, I like that guy. I wanna... Hey man, I, I try to aim for that, man. I try to, man. Yeah, man. Let's uh but yeah, dude, let's let's go ahead and get into it, man. So let's talk. Um what got you started on your journey? Let's talk about your humble beginnings. What got Bradley started? Uh okay. Well, uh that'd be that'd be school theater, fair enough. Um it's I feel like it's always an easy way to get into acting for a lot of people is you try it out at your theater elective. Um I kind of just did it at first because my brother and sister were doing it and they seemed to be moderately okay at it. So I was like, I want to do that. And I did it in middle school and was getting lead and speaking roles and doing all right there in theater and continued to do it in high school and got more reaffirmation that I'm pretty good at it there. Um, and yeah, I was. I mean, I was never good at musical theater, though. I was not singing; is not my forte. Never will be, probably. <laughs> but the just acting and saying words and faking emotion. I guess I'm pretty good at that. Um, and after doing theater all throughout high school, I kind of realized. Um, I guess theater, unfortunately, unless you're in like New York or you're just really have a good connection and can do that sort of thing, it's just not where money is. So I had to find different avenues for acting which is how i said well i love anime and i love cartoons let me get myself a voiceover reel and and the summer i left high school i even said i've never done it before it'd be weird i should try to find a film to audition for and i auditioned for uh, a local film um it was called it was called something different at the time and now it's called walk by faith but um it's a great, uh, great, great film. Uh, Trina Brown uh, and Lamarcus Tinker were the people who worked on that. Um, it, they, they casted me, uh, and it was like a paid role right out of high school, and it was my first thing I ever auditioned for, and it kind of made me go, "Okay, I'm going to take this as a sign that I should pursue this more." And ever since then, I have taken it seriously as like, "Okay, let's." Take this as more of a hobby, more than just a school elective, and now I now I'm calling myself an actor, like it's my job, because nice. it is my job. <laughs> yes. How, how was that moment, that first time you seen yourself on screen? Like, what was that feeling like? Oh yeah. Oh man, I'm, uh, especially in my high school days, because that was when I had the role. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I was, uh, I was a f fat kid growing up. I wasn't even that big i was like 250 pounds but i was bullied about it in middle or middle school and high school and it was something that i was self-conscious about and so i i was i hated seeing myself on screen at the time because i was like oh i'm so not i'm not good looking i wasn't like the oh yeah i wasn't the uh love interest i was the school bully too so it just i mean it worked i i too i i wasn't supposed to look flattering so i guess it works for the film but I was definitely like, oh gosh, I don't. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not leading man material right there. Um, but I, I guess I enjoyed it. Uh, I'll, I'll say, in that first film, the editor did use a take of me one time. It was my first film. I watched the film with a bunch of my friends, and they go, "Did you just look into the camera?" <laughs> and I go, no, they didn't use that take, did they? And there's like this montage scene in this library. And I remember them telling me, they went, oh, Bradley, you looked into the camera. I went, oh, dang it. It's that, it's that thing when you're fresh into acting right. and you just 
Don't look in the camera. Don't look in the camera. Hi, camera. Then, no, I did it. It's still great. You look right into the camera. <laughs> and then they used that take, but they had other takes. And I'm like, no, it was a small production. So it's like, I, you know, smaller. So you can't, can't blame them for those things. But it just made me laugh because I'm like, I mean, I did it. Well, that's a memory of my first film. They oh, used the take man. when I'm giving the camera a good old hi there. Is, it, it, is it is it just me but when they tell you they stress it so much don't look into the camera it's like a part of you want to look into the camera uh-huh. <laughs> like, you're like challenge accepted yeah, like, like, <laughs> don't tell me what to do <laughs> like, that's the rule no yeah no 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 don't look into the camera do you like i want to look into the camera <laughs> Dude, ferris bueller <laughs> break the fourth wall yeah exactly yeah too funny, too funny, man. So tell us a little bit, going to your voiceover. Now, of course, you know, we were all kids growing up watching silly cartoons or whatever. Yeah. What was that first cartoon that you was like, you know what, I'm going to try this voice out and, you know, I'm, I'm going to get into this voiceover stuff. Mm, okay. Um, I did I did Boy Scouts growing up and a lot of that is just being silly with with random kids of all different ages some older some younger which which it it put everyone on an even playing field like you were all just kind of being silly and so sitting around a campfire and singing like silly weird owl songs and that sort of thing would just get you started into being goofy and then i remember we'd get into it was like early meme culture of like quoting shows you were just saying your favorite random quotes and I remember a couple of kids were telling me it was one of those things where you unintentionally do something. And I'm that person where people go, ha, that was really funny. And I, I go, ha, I want to be funny. Please tell me how I did that. And then they go, no, you're never, you're not being funny. Now you're trying too hard. And I'm going, no, <laughs> so I can never be the most funny as I want to. It's like, it's always when I'm not trying, which is why you got to work to not try. But right. uh, I, someone, they, at the time they went, Hey, you did a really good SpongeBob voice because I was also pretty prepubescent, so my voice was higher and I was sounding like SpongeBob. And I remember just that that whole like camp out kind of doing a bunch of different SpongeBob lines, and that was like all the kids going, "Oh, say this one, say this one is SpongeBob," basically because it sounded like a repeat. And I remember that was probably the first time me going, "Oh, that was kind of fun to do do a character voice," even though it was um, an imitation and everything. I still was like, I mean, I know that's a difficult voice to pull off and um obviously i was an actor at the time so I, it was just fun to get that kind of confirmation but um ever since then as i've gotten older funny enough i've learned doing imitations can sometimes be a great way to discover other voices you can do because your imitation is usually at least for me i'm awful at impersonation and so whenever i say oh i'm sounding like this people will go no you don't but exactly now it sounds like a completely unique thing to myself so it's kind of it's kind of a works in my way where i can try to imitate someone and it won't sound like that but hey now i got a new unique bradley voice over here <laughs> so i kind of i've kind of done that with spongebob with uh you know before where it's like oh i can't hit spongebob but hey i'll try to do spongebob and that'll be a character for me so yeah put that one right back into your your pocket of like okay that character voice works for this one, and that one works for that one. I love that, man. That's yeah. dope. You know what's cool about a uh, voiceover? It doesn't matter how old you are. You you uh, you can if you have a unique voice, you can play like an eight year old, like yep. your voice over an eight year old. So yep. I, I thought that's pretty cool because I have a very light voice. I'm a big guy, but my voice is very light. And so when I used to call like customer service, they always would say, yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. And I'm like, I am a guy. So, <laughs> <laughs> and so, so someone, some, someone once told me, like, man, listen, your voice is unique and you should use it. So I'm like, yeah, you know what? That's right. I'm mm -hmm. cool with that's, that. that's actually, yeah, the strongest rule that voice actors always like to like uh, whenever I was going around to conventions and stuff before the pandemic, obviously, and going to like voice actor panels, one of the things I'd always he heard preached is like the best voice you can do is your natural voice. Who can do right. that better than you? So find the, your, the way you have to do it is you just have to be honest with yourself, try to close your eyes, listen to your own voice and, or get other people to listen to your natural voice and say, what kind of character do you hear 
when you just listen to my voice, like, you know, and try to figure out where your natural voice works. So you're also not going, ah, look, listen, I'm, I am eight year old. I am, you know, eight year old little Timmy. <laughs> like you're saying like, oh, it's like some of the higher voice, like you, it's like, you could play like a natural, like teenager or something, you know, you're like, oh, right. sweet. I kind of have just a not higher natural range. My right. like deeper range. I like got told like in theater and stuff. Oh, you you've got a great father voice. And I'm like, okay. I I was so not a a strongly masculine guy. I was just like, it's very weird to be called fatherly and like fatherly, (laughs) fatherly, (laughs) like fatherly. Yeah, no, but yeah, I was always getting that. Just like, okay, we're gonna cast you as the dad or the older guy, and I'm like, okay. Theater. That was how that was how that worked in high school theater. You know, you can cast a. Just your biggest, oldest kind of kid. <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit about your role with the series Redbox. Could you share a little bit about that with us? Sure. So I'm playing Ruben. I've been I've been on the production since Redbox Two. By the way, mm-hmm. uh, we're doing we did Redbox Two, Redbox Part Three, Redbox. We're working on Redbox Four right now. That's what we're doing. And um, we got some interesting stuff going on with my character. So I'm the music producer of this uh, group that's come across the red box and I'm, I'm the, I'm the comedic relief, random mm-hmm. chance character in that. I, I totally was just like um, a, a, a hired person to help work on the, their music. But because uh, this whole red box stuff happened around the same time as they were working on their music, my character, he it was kind of, kind of drunk too he just thought it all sounded fun and crazy and he just tagged along for the ride because music music life rock and roll and he followed them uh and got himself into a heap of trouble that he didn't expect guns and death um a lot a lot of crazy stuff going on and um uh this one he's uh my character is sober now too he's kind of come to clean up his life mm-hmm. but uh because he wants because he wants to take the music more seriously and he realizes with all the crazy stuff going on with red box with the red box um he yeah he just being drunk and uh uncoordinated is not the way to go uh he's found christ again and there's gonna be yeah uh, there's gonna be a big party scene he's kind of celebrating his sobriety mixed with uh, the music event funny enough he's going to get everyone else drunk and high to celebrate him not getting drunk and high because it's about being able to make the choice and being around it <laughs> so yeah he's going to have a big party and that's going to be uh where the finale of this of this shtick sort of takes place is we're going to have a big mansion party scene type dealy maybe not mansion but we'll see Nice, nice, man. Yeah, when I was watching it, um, when it came out, I was like, oh, I'm like, I was excited because I saw multiple multiple people that I've worked with. I'm like, oh, Bradley's in this too, and I was like, that's pretty funny. Oh man, <laughs> it was just a really cool scene. I enjoyed it. And I watched it, and I was gonna ask you, what has been so far besides the Red Box? What has been your favorite role to date right now? Okay. As he sips his drink, <laughs> I think about that one. Um, okay, my favorite role to date. Um, it's just funny because I guess one of them is like it's it's a it's a short that never came out. Um, oh, dang. Yeah, oh. but I'll tell I'll tell y'all about it because it's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I got one scene from it, and boy, it was like the most. An interesting scene from my part, but uh, it's the only proof I have that the film exists. So a few years back, I did, I got an audition for a film that was up in Austin um, and it was paid. It was like a hundred bucks a day. It was like, oh, U- UT Austin, which is why I liked it. Cause I know them, you know, they got good film uh, college and stuff. So I was like, Hey, yeah, let's get in with some good uh, young film people. Um, and uh, so I got and I got hired for uh, I ended up getting the lead role in this film 
And I got hired to do like six days. So I was going to be doing like six days up in Austin, making like 600 bucks. It was like my biggest paycheck in like one lump for like a gig at the time. So I was like, yeah, I'm making 600 bucks. Hell yeah. I was like feeling really, really on my high horse. I, um, and this film, the best way I could, I could put it, my elevator pitch is, is it's a vomit vampire film. It is a film about vampires who feed off vomit. Uh, oh, wow. Yes, and that's, yeah, it's very strange of a concept. Here, it, yeah. But the short, it was well written and actually, like, I was like, okay, I can get on this. And it wasn't too grotesque like this kind of stuff could be. Uh, but... Um, so the, the, it starts with like my character in a bar and I'm just like some uh, meek, meek guy who's just looking for a girl and I end up coming across this mysterious girl and she tells me to like eat this thing and basically it makes me pass out. And then when I wake up, I'm in a cage and I'm in this creepy warehouse and uh, like they, we had even, we had this big, big guy get naked and he was in a cage acting like a dog person. It was like really, uh, they were like, they had some funny stuff going on with that little setting but uh uh i end up to, uh basically this female vampire comes out and forces me to feed as she, she like feeds me stuff and then forces me to vomit and there was like a scene of stuff coming out of my mouth and like going into her mouth i i think at one point there was even like a vomit kiss um it was oatmeal and like chocolate and stuff. It was like very actually not bad at all what the vomit was made out of the fake vomit. It was one of those tricks where like, damn, this looks good, but it did not when you're when you had it in your mouth, you're like, this isn't that bad. Okay. It's not yeah. vomit, so it made it easy. But really all the vampires needed to do was just hang out at the club. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> in the world. <laughs> uh mm -hmm. and, we they ended up having like a prosthetic head um for this sh they had a shot where like this head vampire the main mm -hmm. vampire came in and uh my character i kind of convinced the female vampire to betray him and i end up getting a crossbow and i shoot this chandelier that falls down and it bursts mm -hmm. his head and they had a fake like head that we it was like a one take thing where it's like all right we're gonna break this thing and it's gonna be our one take and they did all that six days seemed like a really cool film a cool concept like it's gross but different it stands right. out um mm -hmm. and then they just and never finished editing it and i was like oh man and That's i kept awesome. begging them for footage begging them for footage and they sent me one scene and it's like a scene when i'm in a cage talking with this other guy and it's more about the other guy and so i'm like ah I got all the shots. Could have got me with the crossbow. Could have got me getting knocked out at the club. Could have got. I was like all the stuff. This I got. I'm just sitting here talking to the cage. I was like, oh. Okay. It's like after all, after all that, I can't stand. Man, that's. Yeah, well, we we've been on you know sets like that where we're like we did all this and all that work, and then we like that was pretty crazy. Good. I use as a footage, and then you just like never see it. Yeah. 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 Yep. yep. It happens. Uh. More often than not, hey, now it's happening with HBO Max, just straight, <laughs> straight oh up my God. canceling their movies. Can you oh imagine being on that level and getting told, that, yeah, no, we're not going to have that come out? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's a show that I had got into. Uh, I just seen one episode, and I'm like, man, I, 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 I'm enjoying the show. And then, like, I want to say, like, two weeks later, they, they said that they're not coming out with another season. So I'm like, what's the point of me finishing – Oh, I hate that. That happens so often now. The yeah. one yeah. season. Hey, you want to love this show for 13 episodes? Well, <laughs> so that's that. all we're going to give you. Right. Oh. I literally always wait now before getting into a show. I try to wait and see if it's going to get renewed for a season two. Same. Before, yeah. Same here. Same here. So, yeah, man, only a couple more quick questions. Um, let's talk about your YouTube channel real quick because I know okay. you YouTube as well, too. Um, you do skits and everything else. Let's talk mm -hmm. about that real quick. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I do, um, I got my own personal YouTube channel, just got my own name, Bradley Smith. And, mm -hmm. um, on there, yeah, I, I started it a little over a year ago, uh, with just the intention to highlight my 
I guess, comedy and writing, just kind of whatever I found interesting. I didn't really have um, a set goal and I still kind of don't. I'm trying to find a little more of a, a niche, but it's always hard to do. Uh, so I started doing like movie, comedic movie reviews just on objectively bad films, like really terribly animated stuff. Um, and uh, I've I've done a couple sketches. Um, it's like classic sketch comedy. I'm wanting to do more of them. It's just difficult because I, I like working with other people. Right. And, uh, it's just hard getting all those moving pieces together. Right. With everything in life, I'm just I I always spread myself <laughs> too thin. But um, uh, on my YouTube channel, other than just movies, I also roast. Uh, I've roasted a movie trailer was the biggest thing I've done was this Pinocchio, a true story uh, with Polly Shore as the mm. Pinocchio. I, I I reacted to that trailer and that video for me hit over a million views, which is insane. Oh, it's like my only one that's hit anywhere close to that. It's mind boggling for me. And uh, the only reason that happened, I've kind of f figured it out now, was that the main trailer itself of the, the Polly Shore Pinocchio trailer turned off its comments. And so everyone went to the next video, which ended up being mine, to go comment and, and say all their funny stuff they wanted to. So I kind of got all the meme lords coming to my... I was like, thank you, internet. Give, give my channel some love. Thank you. Um, and, uh, and then other than that, I've also... I because I, I I guess I don't want to just make my I didn't want to make my channel just um, negative I wanted to show some love so I have some positive wow. videos with still a comedic tone uh, I did a video on like Max Keeble's Big Move because uh, that was just one of my favorite movies as a kid and I'm mm -hmm. like I'm gonna give some love to that um, and then I've started making video essays on cartoons that I really enjoyed my first one being on the old was it WB or um, uh, Adult Swim cartoon of Ob the Oblongs? I remember that show. Oh, I love that. Sh I love that Me show. too. I I I literally just kind of wrote like an English video, uh, like an English essay about the Oblongs and why I liked it and its characters, and put out a video. So I flipped that video so quick. I remember it was, seemed so effortless, and that one for me is also it's like my second biggest video. It's got like three hundred thousand views um mm. appar apparently oblongs was going viral on twitter at the time uh <laughs> because people are people sexualize one of the characters apparently uh, yeah. i did not know about that at all too, yeah. going into the video everyone's like i love creepy susie i'm like a lot of creepy susie fans for some reason oh my gosh <laughs> i think I that that was before rick and morty yep yes yeah. yeah way before rick and morty yeah yeah oh yeah, yeah. it was yeah, classic, classic show. I love it. And um, funny enough, too, uh, the the creator of the show, Angus Oblong, because uh, mm -hmm. I, I like talked about him in my video because, I mean, how are you not going to talk about the creator of the show? And the dude has like kept himself very hidden. Uh, and so mm -hmm. uh, he does, has not made himself a very public presence. So it was very mysterious and interesting. He actually yeah. reached out to me on Instagram because I like commented on one of his Instagram posts. And then he ended up going like, Hey, you're that cool guy that made the video about me, and I'm like, ah, I was seen by by him. So okay. yeah, that was really cool. He, he even I even got recognized by the creator of the show. So that that that's, was very satisfying. That's dope, man. Well, um, and, and yeah, that gives you a good scope of kind of my channel. Exactly, I do a lot on my channel. It's all <laughs> over the place. I love it too, though. So uh, my last question here is: is now you're a screenwriter, right? Mm -hmm. And how do you handle like roadblocks or when you have like when you're stumped? Like when you, how do you get over those things? Uh, as mm. a okay, uh, yeah, that's always, always the, I mean, obviously it is. It's called a roadblock or writer's block in that way. Yeah, obviously, it's going to be the hard part is, is getting stumped. Um, I tend to, uh, there's a couple things I do. I guess at first my short, if I'm really wanting to keep working on whatever I'm working on and I'm like, I don't want to just take a break, you know, and either work on something else or take my mind off it. I sometimes have to kind of do uh, like that improv game of uh, 
where it's like uh, something else where you have to rethink your idea. I take, I step back a scene or two and, um, or a page of dialogue, whatever, whatever I'm working on. And I go, is this really the path that I want to take this? Is this really the best route? Was this the right route? Like, why am I hitting this block? Why, why do I not feel as passionate about writing as I did before? Sometimes, sometimes you just like, cause, um, a lot of writing for me, I, like um, I'm working on a feature film right now and it's just been a, cra a crazy journey. Cause I, for me, it was a lot of preparation of listening to YouTube videos and thinking about working on a film. And I kind of said, well, I'm never going to work on it until I actually sit down and work on it. So I have to turn mm -hmm. a blank page and actually writing. And so I just started doing it one day and um, I find it that it's, it's best if I, cause I'd find myself thinking of like a scene on the way to work in my car or something. And I'd be going, oh, that's a great way to do that scene. Even if it's like the finale climax, I'm going, oh, that's a great way. Everyone come up on stage and they're all clapping. Okay, yeah. And then, ooh, and then they could hug. Oh, that's a good way to do that. That's a, oh, and that's a funny line. Literally, whatever. If I'm not even at that point in my scene, I go and I write that down. Even if it's a rough outline, I write out, um, I start by doing uh, the scene beats. You know, you write interior and all that. You write out how your scenes are going to be put. You write out the action and then worry about the dialogue last too. Because I feel like dialogue's always the stickiest part. What right. exactly everyone's going to say. Write the action first. Write out how your scene's going to go and make sure that, yep, okay, cool. At least I made it to the end action-wise. This all seems good. And then worry about what they'll say later because I feel like that's also where people get blocked is like, oh, was that line funny enough? We'll come back and write a joke later. You need to worry about actually getting your film out there. And for me, that's it too because I'm writing a comedy film. I'm often going, oh, that's not that funny. Okay, well, it's not about being funny right now. It's about getting plot beats. It's about having the character arcs, making sure I'm hitting these things. You can come back and rewrite later, but you can't rewrite if there's nothing to rewrite, if there's nothing to edit. Yeah, I agree on that, man. Good stuff, too. Great information, great information. I, I, so, I learned ah. that because I would often be able to, anytime someone would say, hey, can you, give me an, can you read my thing and give me a, advice? I would read it, be able to edit it. And, you know, can you, when you read someone else's thing, you can always kind of point out the couple of things that you notice could be adjusted. And then um, I go, man, I'm a pretty good writer. I notice these things. Well, why haven't I written anything? Okay, I just need to write something. Just get it out there. Just get your first draft out there. And then if I, if because I can see I can edit other people's things, I just can, can read my draft after that and edit that, so... It's kind of just never being afraid to just write and get your first draft out there. Right. Nice. Your first draft is always going to be your worst thing. So, hey, don't worry about it being your worst thing. Just put it out. And then, I mean, worst case scenario, you just put it out as is. But, I mean, hopefully you wouldn't, hopefully you wouldn't do that. Hopefully. Yeah. And, I mean, that's, yeah, it's been a big thing for me is, like, I'm on, like, a, a, the editing phase, rewriting phase. I've had to scrap entire scenes and stuff where you're like, no, that doesn't work now. And it's like, that's fair. Don't, that's also the thing is I, I kind of realized later on in my film, uh, something contradicted an entire scene early on. Uh, and yeah. I didn't oh, let that man. ruin. I just kept going. Cause I, when I like this idea better, I'll go back and rewrite that part another day though. I got to leave it. Like, don't stress about small things. Cause you is the bigger, you're, you're the only one who's working on this with your mind in that way of like, you you know you'll remember you'll you'll read yeah. your script you'll catch it there you go yes sir man appreciate it for the advice man hell yeah um uh, yeah. last thoughts man last question what does bradley want to accomplish before this year's over with Ooh, okay before we this only year's got over like with. we only got like three months well two, and a half. two months and a half <laughs> right <laughs> um well, I've got a good amount of uh, YouTube videos that I'm wanting to make, Halloween movies, Christmas movies, uh, mm. that sort of thing, because these times are coming around. Other than that, though, my a big project I'm working on, I'll say my kind of uh, magnum opus, I'm, I'm working on a second channel that I'm going to start, and it's going to be a I'm going to have, I'm working on a big kickoff video. I'm nice. trying to, um, I'm going to try to do 
stand-up comedy album special reviews and be a channel that reviews stand-up comedy specials and like literally like reviewing everyone that comes out because no one does that consistently no no one does and that's a great idea and i'm gonna start by my first video i want to be ranking every comedy special from 2022 I'm doing just a big video and that being my first thing that i come out with so people can get a good idea of comedy i like what i thought was good what i thought was wasn't good people can know my vibe my rankings my 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 thoughts and so i've been chipping away watching those and putting down my thoughts penning them um yeah that's my that's my big goal for the end of the year is to finish watching all those and actually get to recording my video on that um because yeah it's it actually has been a very strong year for comedy i've been i've been pleasantly yeah. surprised yeah uh, yeah. But I'm really looking forward to getting into, uh, apparently, Snoop Dogg dropped a stand-up comedy special. I'm like, that sounds fun. <laughs> I want to see Snoop do some stand-up. I, 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 I actually watched that one. It was it was pretty good. That's, it sounds fun. Anything Snoop does is always just yeah. a fun time. It's like, Anything. right? It's like, you can't just not smile with that man. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, man. <laughs> that's a bad dog impression. <laughs> oh man well yeah man there you have it ladies and gentlemen bradley smith thank you again for joining us bro many blessings to you like i said we're gonna be working with each other in the near future i already know it oh yeah you know these things are <laughs> oh yeah we'll be seeing each other again yeah man, and hey big chris mike it was great meeting you guys too oh man thank you thank you it was great meeting you too yeah man so there you have it ladies and gentlemen bradley smith so. Thanks, everyone. Just acting up. All right, y'all know what time it is. It's that time of the show. It's Brother Stretch. Get ready, get ready, get stretched. Who gets the Just Acting Up Award today, brother? Well, I'm, we all know this is Mike's favorite segment, so <laughs> I just had to come back coming from break. I have, had a good one. Uh, this is about a Connecticut man. A fugitive from Connecticut was captured in Georgia. Well, you know, what's so special about that? Well, Fox 5 Atlanta reports that he was taken into custody at, at a home on Saturday afternoon. Uh, prior to fleeing, uh, he was wanted for, well, he did a four-year prison sentence for a robbery conviction. He was being held at a Department of Corrections facility at a halfway house in Bridgeport, and he left without clearance. And so he was last seen there on August 8th. So Deputies received a tip uh, on Saturday afternoon that he had been spotted at a family member's house in McDonough, uh, which is approximately an hour southeast of Atlanta. Uh, according to the sheriff, you know, they tracked him to the family member's house where he was celebrating his birthday. And him and his family were setting up for the party when the police arrived. And yeah, they took him right back to jail. Oh, hell no. Oh, no. On his birthday party? And That's birthday terrible. Party. Post so, uh, you know, Murphy has been taken into Henry County Jail and is expected to face additional charges. Who snitched? That's all I got to ask. Who snitched on the birthday boy? <laughs> That's some petty. <laughs> he ain't supposed to be here anyway. <laughs> oh, that messed up. Mm -mm. That's terrible. Who snitched? These snitches is getting out of hand. They are. <laughs> It was somebody that was old and needs to mind their business. Somebody mad because they didn't get that kind of party on their birthday. Like, How are you going to get a party on his birthday? I'm going to locked up. I'm telling you. know, I wonder what song was playing when they arrested him because, you know, was he was he whipping and nay -nay in It was the swag surfing, <laughs> dropping some cheese on the gritty, you know. No, oh, man. Here we go. They were singing, I'm locked up. They won't let me out. They showed out that. Go. It ain't as bad as the y'all hear about what happened with the Duracell Bunny guy though. They uh but Duracell Bunny was he a guy was arrested, right? It was because he uh was accused of domestic battery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it made my baby cry. <laughs> it made my girl cry. Hey, well, I mean, you know what? It was a, it was also, even though people are arresting animals now too, they also arrested a cat, you know, on charges of perjury. 
Hurt the kids. Bonkers. I know Mike's gonna like this. I know Mike's gonna like this one. This is because this is one of Mike's favorite shows. What did Pablo Escobar say when he got arrested? What? And I would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for the meddling kids. Get it? You know. You know, not everybody have watched Narcos. I got it, but no, but not not everybody watched Narcos. Okay, and then people didn't didn't stay long because it was strictly subtitled. You do realize that, Chris? That was a terrible joke. That was just straight terrible. Narcos. Oh goodness. Man, maybe next time you'll have a better, better. Uh, That's what I think that you couldn't sink any lower, Chris. <laughs> you proved me wrong. <laughs> that was a terrible joke. <laughs> Chris, oh, he got the jokes. Chris got the jokes. Boo, what's up? He said the melon kids. Oh, the melon. <laughs> melon, melon, melon kids. Melon. Mm mm mm. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to get to the bounce neck. Got to give a certain flowers out to a certain individual. Y'all stay locked in. All right, ladies and gentlemen, my good people, this is the segment that we call the bounce neck where we usually focus on not just the baby that is here. Hey, babe. Hey, sweetie. Hey. She's like, who is this man? <laughs> <laughs> baby fever? Hold on now. Oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. Oh. Chris Jokes upset at her. <laughs> I like how she turned and looked at <laughs> him. Like, you lie. <laughs> you lie. <laughs> yeah, man. So this is this is a, a segment where we focus on, you know, giving flowers out to individual, or we focus on mental health. Now, do remind yourself that we are in the month of October. So breast cancer awareness, like we said, men, yes, you can get it too. So nothing wrong with getting a regular checkup. So you might want to go ahead and do that. So Yes, I know, like I said before, there are people out there that are raising awareness by wearing their pink bands, their pink shirts to get the ribbon or run 5Ks. I actually might just get back into one of those 5Ks. Trust me, I need to. But besides all that, we want to give flowers out to a certain individual. This is my fault. This is my fault. This is all of our fault. Well, not all of our faults because Tashe wasn't here. So Tashe, you are omitted from this. Gotta give a certain individual their flowers now. Chris. Oh. Yeah, Chris, oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I know yeah. sometimes Chris don't he like man, no, I don't want no no prayer right now. But yeah, nah, brother, we got to man. So this man does work hard. He was working uh hard while he was on vacation. He does edit the show, ladies and gentlemen, and he is an actor as well. Shout out to Chris, man. The boy was on he was on TV. Chris, you on TV? <laughs> Chris, Chris always put in that work. He's a, he edits the show. Great. Um, he puts the things together. He puts the segments together. And he he really he's really the person behind the scenes that gets everything running smooth because Lord knows I don't know how to edit. James <laughs> I, James is working. But but Chris is the one that's <laughs> leading the charge. He's leading the charge. And one thing I can say about Chris, Chris is loyal to the soil. He's very loyal because he's a, a Houston Texans fan. And Lord knows the Houston Texans ain't gave you nothing All right, to know. celebrate about. <laughs> the Houston Texans ain't gave you anything to celebrate about. Nothing at all. You hear me? They've been around since 2002 and they gave you nothing. But yet you still wake up every Sunday happy. That's loyalty. The Lord knows I would have been left long time ago. <laughs> oh, oh, could put our L's up for Chris? Yeah, let's put, put our L's up so. for Chris. Elbow. <laughs> so so good. That boy got some loyalty on his shoulder side. Hey, Lord hey, have man, mercy. I, I, I just want to be there for when for the for the barbecue and everything with 
with with the Texans. You know, they had the little the little trail rides and all the other stuff. That's what I want. The the parties. Yeah. And stuff. That, that's the what parties. I want. The okay. parties yeah. and just having a party because yeah. that ain't gonna happen for their other party. The <laughs> Super Bowl party ain't gonna have no Super. Yeah, they're gonna have a Super Bowl party. They're gonna be right <laughs> there. One day, right there. It, ain't gonna be, it ain't gonna be one day. It's gonna, gonna be one day. We're gonna have our she, day. She, she, you know, one day she's gonna have her own kids. That's how long it's gonna be. We ain't even gonna be here, Chris. We not, might not be. Here. I think it's gonna be a, 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 a balance in there. Y'all started off so good. It was, it was, it was, it was oh, nice. <laughs> Chris came, Chris, don't, don't mind Mr. Mike. Okay. He even got the baby looking at him sideways. Yeah. The baby's like, what are you talking about? Like, but no, Chris, we really do appreciate you. <laughs> yeah, we do. <yeah. laughs> and all the things that you do, and we appreciate your loyalty for the Texans and for us. Um, <laughs> and also, we, you know, want to thank you for also working while you were on your break. We appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Let's stop recording. Uh, we clapping in. Clapping, clapping. 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 Come on, come on. You know how to clap. Come on, come on. Clap. Patty cake, patty cake. Go on, clap. clap. Y'all want to see my big boy? She don't want to clap. My big boy. What up, man? He had to bend down. Hold on, wait. <laughs> she bring it. She <laughs> everybody bring their kid on. I'm, well, my, my kid is off with the family and everything. So I'm like, everybody bring Hey, what's up, dude? What's up? <laughs> what's going on? Oh yeah, I see the resemblance. Yeah, the resem yeah, I see it all right there. I see the resemblance right there. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Let's make this clear. This is he not is mine. So low to you. <laughs> this he is not mine. Mine's is at my mama's house. This is not <laughs> mine. Well, everybody, everybody bringing their family member. <laughs> this is my baby boy. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. How, how, how tall are you, dude? How, how, he, yeah, how tall are you? How, how tall are you? He's six feet. Six Ooh. feet? Yeah, he's right there. Well, he's taller than me. Congratulations. I'm proud of you. I'm just... <laughs> I, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's tall, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's tall, yeah, he taller than me. Yeah, he's right up there with Chris and Mike. His he birthday up there with next weekend. He'll be 14 on the 14th. Okay. Shout Happy birthday, birthday, bro. It's 1414, it's a special year. Flex on, flex on, flex on, flex on. Hey, man, happy early birthday, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, that's going to do it for our show right there, man. Mike with the baby. Mike said, just, just, just stop. Just, just stop. Just not, just not mine. Uncle. Yeah, no, this not mine. This is Uncle. Uncle Mike. <laughs> Sorry, the TV. Too. That does sound like Hey. That do sound like a TV show. It's been Uncle on Mike. Mike. Uncle Mike. Man, y'all got anything for get up out of here? Um, also, don't forget that it is uh, Domestic Awareness Month as well. And so we want to do encourage any ladies that are dealing with any kind of domestic abuse, um, whether it's physical, mental, whatever, uh, please reach out to any, you know, family um, any hotlines, any help that you can get, it's never too late. Man, amen again. Chris, you got mm -hmm. any positive notes, bro? My positive part of the day, um, your dream doesn't have an expiration date. Take a deep breath and try again. Mm. Love it. I like that. Oh, cool, cool. Uncle Mike? I like that. Uncle Mike? Nothing. Uncle Mike has nothing in the tank. That's a true uncle, because that's how I'm uncle too. <laughs> you got anything, Uncle James? Mm -hmm. Stay out of trouble. Turn yeah. <laughs> stay, stay out of trouble. James, we need you to play someone's dad or a something on something, because you have this face that you make. <laughs> my daughter be getting the, my daughter get the most of them. She all do something like, I think that's how I looked at her the other day. She was doing something. And I was like. <laughs> I mean, yeah, my yeah, you had that look. I, I that do. Father, that fathery look. <laughs> you don't have to say much. You just got that look. Like, I've done that a couple times. With a, yeah. Oh, my God. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, guys. Um, yeah. You know, we just got to keep it positive. Try to... <clears throat> 
you know, plant our seeds and just pour our positivity right now. So much things going on. Nope. There you go. And on that yeah. note, Peace see y'all out. next time.